Welcome back to class. Uh, today we're talking about teledata, a little bit of security, a little bit of something called DAS, and uh, speakers, wireless, things like that. And so uh, the, the language for this uh, lecture is really what I want you to try and pick up, just, just to hear some of it. Uh, I have opened a set of drawings here, and we'll start here with uh, this set of drawings, and then we'll get uh, more more detail with a larger set of drawings. But uh, the last time I the 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 first time I taught this class, I didn't actually talk about this subject, and so partially because uh, the first time I was teaching the class, I had to put a lot of content together and never got to this content but another good reason is that I try to teach this class from a general contractor standpoint and a lot of times the owner the client that we're working for hires the company doing their data or their wireless or their speakers and so uh, their their audio visual and they don't go through the general contractor. They might hire somebody else to do that. And uh, truth be told, I'm not, this isn't a language that I speak uh, really, really well. This uh, voice, data, telecommunications, uh, wireless, I understand it okay. But because uh, the clients usually are the ones working directly with um, the installers, me as the working as a general contractor don't usually communicate uh, a lot directly with uh, the managers or the trades doing the actual work for this stuff on a, on a few jobs I have and so uh, they're they're directly with the general contractor but but most of them they're not and so I haven't had as much time uh, in my career working with these trades um, or these specific systems other than through the client themselves who is managing it and so I'll, I'll get into a little bit of coordination but mostly my my uh, so when I say that I haven't spent a lot of time trying to deal with warranty on these systems for instance because it was the if it doesn't go well it goes the clients going directly with uh, to, to the person they hired, not through the general contractor for it, so I'm not getting involved. Um, or failures or things like that, so it doesn't have to be a warranty, but any, anything major that went wrong. Where other systems have been involved in, in more complex things that haven't gone well, and uh, get to be understanding the systems really pretty well, in my opinion, from, from a general contractor standpoint. Not that I would be good enough to ever install it, I, that's not my point of view. So let, let's dive in, and I'm, I'm working off this set of drawings here that uh, I think is really worthwhile. So the number of pages is, is 68 pages of drawings. Is that a large amount of drawings for you, a small amount? I don't know. It's just a, a small uh, kind of an office building kind of thing. Um, Maybe I think this is a maybe the dental office. I don't remember, but the point being, there is a there's only seven sheets for electrical. One, two, I think yeah. There's only seven sheets for electrical. Some projects you only get like one sheet for electrical or no sheets for electrical. And so let me try and take through take you through this size project and and show you what we got so what I have I'm I'm zoomed in on this page here and you see how the this electrical page let me get rid of uh, these thumbnails do you see how this page has these notes well I split my screen and and this is the notes section right here I'm zoomed in on the notes over here so we can read through the drawings and let's just start on the top left hand corner and start reading through some of this stuff. So we've got a note number seven, and that's a fire alarm. And it's uh, 
tied to the FACP, fire alarm control panel. In a class A loop, uh, cables are running separate conduits. Okay, so this fire alarm, we've got one here. We've got the fire alarm. Uh, I think this is the control panel on the and the enunciator panel all all together right here, but I'm not positive. I didn't see the uh, fire alarm. Oh no, FACP is right here. Oh, just found it. So the fire alarm control panel. This this guy right here is getting tied to the fire alarm control panel, and uh, all the all these uh, note number sevens um, fire alarm devices. This is probably this looks like a horn horn uh, of some type. Maybe it's a horn strobe. I'm not sure, but this is this is a little horn for the fire alarm. And we'd have to go look at the. Uh, we we could do that. Let's do that. Just over communicate, right? So let's do it. So we'll try and uh, split the screen one more time. And on this one, we'll grab. Uh, see if we can get those symbols. Fire alarm, okay. Maybe that's too much, I don't know. Hopefully that's not too much on my screen. So now I've got the symbols, I've got the drawing, and I've got the uh, the notes over here. I'll try and give you a little bit more. So we've got this uh, this guy right here. Fire alarm horn with strobe. So it's, it's a horn strobe. Uh, fire alarm device and it's tied to the FACP fire alarm control panel which is in this uh, in this room over here FACP now what's interesting is these these devices this is not showing you know how on an electrical circuit you see the outlet uh, this duplex outlet is tied together right here bing, 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 right all those are tied together and that's going to uh, panel C, circuit 22, and you see that little, we've talked about this in other lectures, right? It's got that little home run symbol saying it's going back to panel C22. And if we zoomed out to this, panel C is right here. We're seeing panel C, B, and A. This little uh, dashed line, that's the dedicated space for this panel, right? So no one can put anything in this room, this part of this space, because that's code. Uh, Right, so got other things in the room that they're trying to use this space for, but can't put anything in that space. But it, back to my point, sorry about digressing. This horn strobe doesn't have like a, a line going to other other fire alarm devices, right? So we've got other fire alarm devices right here. We've got this is probably a pull station, I'm assuming F. Uh, yeah, fire alarm manual pull station mounted 42 inches above finish floor, the AFF above finish floor. So there's the pull station right there. There's another horn strobe. It doesn't show them connected, right? But they're all going back to this FACP, the fire alarm control panel, which controls it all, monitors it all. And then the this note number eight, this guy right here, that is the enunciator panel. So furnish and install fire alarm enunciator panel um, with the, at the approximate location as shown. So if you've gone into any, really any kind of, very common to see them in the building entryways. Why? Because the fire department, somebody, uh, emergency response, responding to uh, the fire uh, alarm going off and saying that they're in trouble after a period of time, the fire alarm will be notified and uh, excuse me the fire department will be notified or other emergency response professionals will be notified right and they'll come check this fire alarm enunciator panel and it'll tell them what room uh, on this little display right here it'll say where where are we picking up uh, the smoke so uh, note number seven So note number seven is a good example. We have like that note number seven right there. What is that? Uh, we have a photo cell. I thought that that would be a smoke detector is what I was thinking it was. But I don't see it called out. But it's got to be, this has got to be a smoke detector right here. I didn't see it in the symbol list though.
fire alarm system photometric smoke detector. I wonder if the S is something else. It's got to be. So that's kind of the downside of some of these. Not all the symbols. We've talked about this in the past, right? Not all the symbols are there. But because it says Note 7 on it and it has like that symbol, I'm assuming it's a smoke detector. I mean, the smoke detectors are all over the place. So it's got to be. That's got to be the smoke detectors. Uh, so this enunciator panel will be able to tell which one of these devices is is going off and is saying it's reading smoke and that that's it'll read out right here it'll also read out at the fit the fire alarm control panel but this is really receiving all the information here and controlling the whole system monitoring the fire sprinkler system and also uh telling the fac the the enunciator panel the farap in this case what to read out Okay, so we've got, let's try and run through, we got seven, a uh, little bit of fire alarm stuff, smoke, we've got the pole stations, uh, let's see if we can find anything on, uh, this might not have, I would assume this has a sprinkler system in it. What's well, 10? All right, well, what I was looking for was anything that's showing that the fire sprinkler is being monitored the the sprinkler system is being monitored but i couldn't i couldn't find that um so in a couple other ones we found just now ada strobe um we've got that one right there and right there and where are those uh it looks like they're in this little break room also in the restrooms right here so i've got some ada stuff going on there um, so fire alarm, that's one of the, one of the systems that I didn't cover a lot in other lectures. I thought it'd be worthwhile. So let's move on and then we'll stay in this top left-hand corner. Go back to the top left-hand corner and what do we see? Number one, furnish and install four inch by four inch, two and a half inch deep J box or junction box with a single gang mud ring for voice data outlet. So they want a 4x4 four four junction box with a single gang mud ring. So they want one, even though they want the box to be bigger, they just want a small uh, a small part for the mud ring, meaning where, the, where you actually see it come out of the drywall, for voice and data outlet. Run a 3 quarter inch conduit to the nearest accessible ceiling space. Insert a pull string and label. All right, so this is what we've got right here. We've got this outlet similar to this in that it's we've got a junction box for power right here. We've got a junction box right next to it for voice and data is what they're calling it for. What, what would be voice and data? It could be telephone. It could be Internet. could be when it says voice and data outlet, uh, it could be an internal network that they're doing. I don't know for sure what this is yet and and uh, we could go look and try to find the symbol see if that helps us but I don't think it will and nah, it just says flush voice data outlet the point being this is still in the court of the client so what they're going to use it for and exactly how they're going to manage internet their network uh, their their phone service I don't know from this information. All I know is that the general contractor has to contract with an electrician to be able to put this junction box in here that's a 4x4 four four junction box with a mud ring that reduces it down to one gang and we need a 3 quarter inch conduit from this junction box over to what they're calling an accessible ceiling space. So let's assume for a second this room has an acoustical ceiling 
Do we need to bring up what we're talking about with acoustical ceilings? Um, let's do it. Just I want to make sure. like that right there All right so you push this panel up out of the grid and you actually like that guy you're seeing he's actually putting in the grid right now uh, so you there's a space above the ceiling uh, where it's accessible and sometimes it's used as the plenum right I've talked about that before the space above the ceiling here's a a grid ceiling and above that is the structure you can kind of see the structure above here in this photo uh, with the with the steel decking above it usg wants to know my location no thanks okay so we've got a three quarter inch conduit coming out of the wall right here so it goes up the wall and above the ceiling and then just dead ends and they're going to put a pull string in it. Uh, pull string is just like a nylon string. <laughs> I don't have to describe it anyway. The point being, though, is that uh, there will be data cables up here. And the data cable, maybe let's just call it like they're going to use like a Cat5 data cable. They'll be able to bring the Cat5 data cable. Uh, maybe they're just going to suspend it or something. Uh, from the ceiling bring it into this conduit that's up in the ceiling space and then down the wall and over to uh, this uh, voice data outlet let's just pretend like that's what they're going to do and so they've got these all over the place right so they've got uh, one here one here um, got voice data number four so furnish and install uh, four by four by two and an eighth junction box in the millwork in the approximate locations shown for the voice data outlet run one inch conduit up nearest wall to accessible ceiling space insert pull string and label coordinate exact location conduit routes and stub ups with millwork installer so they want this one in the millwork at this uh, at this counter space and they got them here 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 all all next to the uh, the power outlet right so what are they going to put here? Probably a bunch of computers and they need some network uh, ability right there. You need to have the internet or tied back into however they're going to computer system they want to use, whether it be something else. or maybe there's some telephones too, because it's, it says voice data. So it could be some telephone jacks. Uh, it could be voice over IP. I'm not sure what system they're using. Okay. We've got this room here with one note. Number one, we're back to this junction box. Um, I wonder what note number seven says. Install fire alarm devices in that. What would that be right there, do you think? Motor location. I wonder if that's a duct detector in there. They're, they're, I'm wondering if that's some sort of exhaust fan above this space and they're monitoring that duct. I don't know. Don't have enough information here for me to know. And I didn't work on this project directly, so I'm not sure. But now this is this is interesting right here. Verse number 16. Run two four-inch conduits from TTB to existing power pole telephone terminal oh, TTP, ter telephone terminal um, bar bus I can't remember what the B is but but it's a telephone terminal uh, so in this room there's a, a place that they're saying there's a terminal uh, let's just call it a bus for now or bar I can't remember, uh, but uh, that is where they're going to land uh, two conduits, 
are going to be running to that route so that they can then use that for Comcast and CenturyLink. So it sounds like they want internet. CenturyLink is probably a phone. Maybe it's a, the ability to have two internet service providers. I'm not sure. And then label the conduits at telephone terminal block. We'll call it that telephone terminal block. Uh, coordinate this work with Comcast and CenturyLink prior to any RO work. What's RO? Rough uh, work. Okay, so this is interesting to me in that they've got these two conduits right here, and this is a small project, and it's saying that there's a there's a there's a power pole somewhere that we need to run two conduits from a power pole somewhere on the project outside the building somewhere over to this location and on the power pole is where Comcast and CenturyLink are so you kind of get a feel for what this is going to be is that we're going to have uh, Comcast internet and telephone and maybe that's what we're doing with some of these right here these right so we've got these uh, data outlets right here with potential to do both internet and telephone but I'm not they didn't talk about what the the, the circuiting or uh, the cabling I think might be more accurate what the cabling is and what how the system's going they don't have like a riser diagram for this so I don't know for sure how they're gonna do that or what they're gonna do for uh, uh, like like a master distribution uh, panel or something like that but kind of get the feeling that they have something back in here in this room we've got 7 and 14 as well so yeah we got furnish and install 4 foot by 8 foot 3 quarter inch plywood telephone terminal board definitely going to have uh, uh, if they're going to do that they are definitely got some uh, telephone right uh, with two coats of white fire retardant paint so that's going there and then we already know what seven is seven's uh, probably a smoke detector okay so we've got uh, we've got a little little data room right here and that that's sort of uh, I think what I have on this drawing which is kind of nice because they're showing this everywhere and I hope you got what what uh, a smaller office building might have in it from low voltage and uh, fire alarm and uh, telephone and data right so we've got fire what we've covered so far we've got some fire alarm systems we've got uh, some data systems internet a telephone and we know that uh, what's what's going to be involved we got some conduits coming from the outside coming in so we're doing a little shopping now and I found us a little fire alarm control panel it's for five zones only so it's pretty inexpensive but it's not going to work for what we just had we had lots more uh, things than that uh, now we got down here we got like a little horn strobe right and the pole stations that's all I was trying to do is show some of that let me pause this for all right now we're shopping some more so I was talking about the cabling running through the ceiling let me bring up the drawings for a second we were talking about how there is a conduit let me zoom out so you can kind of see where we're at back in this little receptionist area we've got number one which is saying a four by four two and a half two and an eighth deep junction box with a single gang mud ring with voice of data outlet run a three quarter inch conduit so there's a three quarter inch conduit running to this uh, in the wall up the wall and over into the ceiling and when we turn this building over to the client or maybe during construction the client wants to work cl uh, closely with the contractor and have their uh, their data folks come in which is probably really likely the have them run their cables through and so I just went shopping for kind of what that would look like and they're they were gonna pull something like this like like an Ethernet cable uh, through or if they're doing telephone it would be something like that maybe or you can also do voice over IP which is also coming over 
uh, these these kinds of Ethernet cables, and there's all different kinds, and I don't know the difference between all of them. So we're not even getting into that. I just wanted you to know that when you're seeing this above the ceiling and you're seeing this conduit sticking out above the ceiling, it's like dead aired right there. The conduit is done. It's complete. Uh, and the the data uh, or voice or data or comm or something like that is going to be using that, uh, that ceiling space to bring a, a cable over and into that conduit. <laughs> I think I remember one time uh, creating punch list items for incomplete conduit <laughs> as it was sitting out in the ceiling. And I'm like, why did they just dead end that conduit right there? It looks like it should go somewhere. And it, and uh, again, like I said, I don't, this is, this is years ago, but uh, I felt really dumb and I went back through and erased all my, <laughs> erased them all. Uh, so once I realized, oh, that was all, started looking it up in the drawings, like, oh, it's supposed to be there. Anyway, I was inexperienced. It's all right. Fun. That memory just came back to me. That's entertaining. All right, now we're going to look at the uh, S.J. Quinney drawings. Now, I didn't work on this project either, but I really like their set of drawings, uh, as, as examples. Um, when I said I didn't work on I was a different role at the time, so I wasn't directly on this job. The guys that did it, ladies that did it too. Fantastic group. The, uh, But I think, and I like the designers, I like everybody on this project, so I, I like their set of drawings, and I think they're good uh, good examples on this. So give you a, a big bigger picture. There's 437 documents on this one. What was it on the other, uh, uh, the little set of drawings we had for that, that, uh, for the um, dental office, like 60 something, um, 60 something pages versus a University of Utah um, campus building. And this is, so scaled way up, right? And so remember in, on this uh, combined set, oops, I should go to, uh, I think it was like third page in. Yeah, this third page in, this is sort of their, let me zoom out, sorry, like entryway into the building and there's like a uh, counter receptionist kind of thing here, check-in area, uh, but their little data rooms right there. So, there's a there's another term for for this right, and I'm going to show you on a larger project what they call them, and they call it the MDF or the IDF. So main, ooh, I think it's main distribution frame. I think let me look it up. MDF versus IDF room. What does it stand for? Main versus uh, I'm sorry, see, uh, I don't I don't know right off the top of my head what uh, IDF versus MDF. I just know that's the main and I thought it would distribution main distribution frame okay I don't think I was wrong did I say that right the first time main distribution frame so main distribution versus intermediate distribution so on this project what are we looking at anyways I should go back right we're looking at a schematic I'm hoping that's obvious you guys we've talked a lot about schematics uh, schematics do not represent anything of what they actually look like the, the components really it's just showing relationship so I think that this is a good place to start because it's showing the components, it's showing the conduits, and then we'll go back to the floor plan and then sort of get a feel for um, how this is sort of laid out through the building. But I think this is worthwhile. So we got we've got this uh, this thing we're calling it the eight inch high 
eight foot high fire treated plywood continuous on wall. Basically they have this room with a big piece of plywood on it that they're going to mount a bunch of stuff to it. Okay. A bunch of comm stuff, data stuff. Uh, they might have racks also in the room, uh, data racks. I would assume they do anyways. So in the room, we're going to bring uh, four sandy four conduits four four inch conduits to the manhole on the north side of the building and there's four four inch conduits to the east side of the building so they must have some manholes on campus that have a bunch of comm stuff in it that they want us to connect to the mdf 1000 q room okay so there's there's a it's campus is all connected right so this whole thing's all connected network uh all kinds of stuff in this uh, internet networking all that stuff right so we're talking we're, we're connecting to the rest of the campus here and then it's showing that there are six uh, four inch conduits to the main telecommunication closet so we're connecting the IDF2 with the main main dis, main uh, uh, main distribution frame room and it's kind of showing like MDF 1000 is right below the IDF room number one. And IDF uh, room number one 2000 is right below IDF room 3000. So there, how we know that is like, one, they would do that on purpose because it's easy to get data to go stack vertically through all these rooms. But uh, they don't always have the same configuration they're not always in the same location but I think on this set of drawings they're the same and we've got four or it provides six four inch sleeves through the floor so the cables are able to get through the floor between the different rooms and there's six four inch sleeves so uh, we'll see a room layout here in a second I hope if I can find it I'm feeling confident now inside uh, the MDF uh, 1000 room we have a sleeve through the wall and we're gonna fire stop it after the cable installation but then there's gonna be like a cable tray that is gonna run throughout the building okay so it's gonna come out of this MDF room these cables and what, what kind of cables are we talking about um, probably all all uh, I would assume they're all like those um, Ethernet wires, I would assume, but I don't know. It do, it doesn't bother me if I'm wrong either. I'm not an expert in this, but I assume this is mostly Ethernet cables and stuff, and maybe coax. I don't know. Yeah, probably some coax too. I would assume. And let's see. Okay, so what do we got? We have a uh, stub conduits to tray cable provide insulated throats all right I don't know really what that means but uh, we've got two going two conduits going to uh, this junction box for a typical furniture what that means is like you know how you have like modular furniture in an office uh, they're saying that out of the cable tray we're gonna come over probably through a conduit in the wall one and a half one and a quarter inch and there's two of them to this junction box for the furniture okay so we, they'll be able to have a junction box by the furniture and then continue to uh, to move I think I have I'm sitting somewhere where you might be able to see that you see that all right right there they've got uh, that Ethernet cable coming out of the wall power coming out of the wall for the furniture that I'm sitting at something like that I'm not saying that's exactly what they're doing, but give you an idea of what this is talking about. And so what about this one? They've got one inch conduit for a typical wireless access point. The, and it has that symbol. When we go look at the plans, we'll find that. And then they have an inch and a quarter conduit to floor boxes, a typical floor data outlet. And that's interesting that they're showing it schematically for the next floor up. Uh, so saying that the MDF 1000 is actually feeding uh, the 
the floor boxes for the next floor up. See, accessible ceiling, second floor, first floor. We can kind of get that that line right there, right? So there, there's a ceiling space where this thing's in the ceiling. This conduit is in the ceiling, and it goes up to the floor, the the floor box uh, above. I'm hoping you know what a floor box is. It's just a typical floor voice data outlet, right? And they're going to pop up a little piece of the floor, and you'll be able to plug in uh, to, to the Ethernet cable there. Okay, cool. So let's let me put this on pause, and I'll come back with the sheet. Well, let me just show you because I'm I'm a little nervous doing this lecture because I'm not perfect at this stuff. I already admitted that I don't speak this language really, really, really well. And, and I'm, uh, I'm not a beginner at it by any means, but oh, I'll show you that I do struggle a little bit here. So I'm looking at the ET drawings. So I have ET, uh, and, and we're just going to go to the first floor. Okay. And we'll start on the left here. So I bet if we trace the cable tray, look, we got a 6 inch by 4 inch cable tray. What is that thing right there? Probably the wireless access point. Wireless access point. I looked for this symbol, uh, but it's not It's not actually shown anywhere. This, what do we know about that? We could go, we could go pull up the symbols, but I think we know what they are. Floor box, floor box, uh, voice and data outlet, voice and data outlet, floor box, or, well, it says floor box. Uh, Right, so this this room's got a bunch of floor boxes, voice and data outlet, and let me over communicate where my mouse is right here. That's the voice and data. Good evening, library patrons. We want to thank you for your assistance. Okay, so where my mouse is right here. Sorry, I had to put that on pause. Got the announcement going over the speaker, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. So keep that in mind. We got that little symbol right there. We looked at it in the previous one. That's the voice and data outlet right next to the junction box for the duplex outlet, right? And we got floor box, wireless access point, even though they're using a different symbol. We've got this cable tray. Cable tray, cable tray. I wonder if I should show you a cable tray real quick. I didn't do that. Um, Super simple. Let's see if we can find a picture of it. Yeah, like all different kinds of cable trays right here. This one we've got this cable tray. That's a pretty extensive cable tray <laughs> for whatever that is. It's got that another version of a cable tray. Whole bunch of cable trays there. And I don't know uh, the job well enough to know what cable tray they specified, but I'm sure that if we went in the, in the specs, they'd be able to tell you what, what cable tray they want. <clears throat> but it's above the ceiling. It's 10 foot 6 above the finished floor. So I've got this 6 inch by 4 inch cable tray. Fall on that around, right? So out of the cable tray would be this uh, wireless access point, right? That we'd be able to connect one of those cables to. Out of this would be coming over to above the ceiling and then down the wall and into that, right? Looks like the cable tray changes sizes here. So now we're at a 12 inch by 4 inch cable tray. Following this back, you're seeing like all the floor boxes and stuff. All the way over to here, huh? Now, I wasn't looking closely for where we are, but I can see it now. Here's the IDF, IDF number two. So we got the IDF number two room right here. So all the, remember how like the rooms were stacking the M, the main distribution, uh, or excuse me, not the main distribution frame is right below this room and a uh, bunch of conduit rack I mean, uh, data racks up in the ceiling data rack is coming here so I mean not data rack I'm sorry cable tray 
cable tray up in the ceiling here and then the cable tray is connected here and they're just running all these cables above the ceiling uh, to all these different locations to make the network and uh, so was that too hard like was that that wasn't too bad I think and I hope you feel when we read through this uh, first first looked at the uh, this riser diagram compare this with let me split the screen I hope you feel fairly confident here just by looking at the two and we want that one to go to ET where remember kind of because we have like all the heavy gr heavy dark stuff is the stuff that they're actually should be paying attention to on this drawing and the lighter gray stuff is just the background so even though they used a different symbol uh, for the wireless access point uh, that's that's a pretty good example of <clears throat> they use the C they switched it from that triangle thing to that thing on the floor plan but that's the wireless access point and we have these and that look at that one that one's saying it's 60 inches above the floor you know what that means like that's the same outlet I mean the same data light outlet but they want it up high um, we got all these floor boxes where are the floor boxes fed from well we know from this that the floor box for this floor is actually fed from uh, we were in it would be down here in the MDF uh, so what one was it yeah because that floor had IDF1 on it interesting wait a second IDF2 1000F Oh, we're over here on this side. I'm sorry. That's the one we're actually looking at for this uh, this this drawing I'm in. And I'm I'm wonder I don't know this building well enough to tell you whether there's a. I don't think there's slab on grades. So I think that all the floor boxes are coming in from below. But it could be I don't know. But I think you got the idea that we've got. A race, uh, we got a, a cable tray, and in the cables are a bunch of, I mean, in the tray is a bunch of cables feeding all this stuff, all this data, the wireless access point, and the floor boxes and stuff like that. And so it's fairly easy to understand that this IDF room is stacking from floor to floor. So let's do that. Let's just show it. Level 1 telecommunications plan, and we'll go to where's the IDF room here? I wonder if this is the wrong one. IDF 2, let's see if it stacks. It's between grid. C.4 and C and 4.5 and 5. Yeah, look, C.4 and C. And it's be, it's a right around 4 and a half, 4.5. <coughs> Excuse me, talking too much now. The layout of the floor looks like it's completely different, but that IDF room is about the same location as the other one. So they're right on top of each other. Kind of cool. All right, let's switch over to one thing I wanted to show you on here. Check this out. We've got this elevator, note number one. There's our notes. So you got the elevator and this little symbol right here. And it should be that one, right? So it's a hexagon with note number one. There it is right there. 
provide a telephone intercom connection for emergency communications, coordinate exact mounting locations and elevation with architectural code reference plans. And then they, they talk about the rest of the Viking model and all this other stuff. So this whole room, this whole floor plan, I should say, uh, is also governing the telephone communications for uh, somebody gets stuck and can't get down, the elevator's not working, like you have that ADA ability to come over here and get to that telephone and say, I can't get out, I'm, uh, I'm by elevator, whatever. Uh, elevators stop working and sometimes uh, get recalled, right? And then somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with mobility issues won't be able to get down the stairs, they can come to this point right here and call and get help and tell them exactly where they're at. Um, or maybe they don't have mobility issues and they just need to come right out of the stairs and come talk. Anyway, thought that was interesting, something to point out. Okay, now in the building I'm in, uh, there is speakers as well, and I think it's worthwhile just showing uh, speaker systems real quick. Audio visual, audio video. So EJ, all right, maybe it would be worthwhile seeing if I can find uh, the electrical symbols real quick, because we haven't done this one yet. So we've got reference one line, light fixtures, lighting control, wiring devices, power, electrical power, structured cabling. See, look, that's what we were just looking at earlier, right? Some of those. Fire alarm technology. All right, cool. Found it. So we've got the S with the P next to it. Uh, I'm not sure what the P stands for, but we've got what is that? Speaker ceiling mounted. And I don't, I don't remember what the P stands for. Don't so don't worry too much about it right now. But notice that it's this is showing that they're all daisy chained together. They're all connected. It's being coming back to the MDF room. Do you remember this MDF room? We just did main distribution 1000Q. So we note number two. Ooh, what happened there? Sorry about that. Yeah, it's just going to the AV rack. Audio visual rack, sorry. But that's that's what I was just talking. We have speakers, all this stuff right here. Speakers, speakers, speakers. All throughout this building. All connected. Okay might be interesting in other parts of the building where you might have like a conference room or a theater or something like that where it has its own own uh, speaker system um, and I'm sure there are but for now the point was just to try and give you a, hey there's speakers up there that have to be coordinated as well as we look through that we've got equipment cabinet screen projection projected uh, ceiling, projector ceiling mounted and on this drawing we don't have any so let's go look for some of those real quick EJ let's look on the second do we have any here got a cabinet looks like is 
isn't that what those were oh no that's not cabinet I think that's a monitor I don't see that symbol but I'm thinking that's a TV oh here we go so what's that right there now we've got note number six install the specified black back box flush in the wall with the center of the box confirm exact location you know and I don't even know what a number six is but projector rough in devices is what I was thinking that was I don't know if that's what the <clears throat> note number six is for as well I have to do more research if I can figure it out but I'm thinking that's a projector with the screen and we can't see this note number whatever that is right there that's what I think that is but I don't know but that's kinda of what I was talking about was you could have its own little own little controlled area with speakers and stuff okay get the idea Michael thanks alright we're back now talking about something related but it's more newer technology I think is fair to say and I say it's a doer because it seems like it keeps changing and again reiterating that I'm no expert in this stuff uh, I can speak a little bit of language I know what we're roughly talking about when when I hear this uh, and that's not the point of the class is to become an expert in these systems so I'm fine to share with you but again I don't I don't know this like really really well I've never installed one of these systems myself so I, I don't have that that level of knowledge but I do have some so I want to show what uh, the significance of this system okay so we're, we're on uh, the second page of a set of drawings with 195 pages and it's another this is Weber State's uh, um, one of the newer buildings on campus uh, the north end zone building right and so look at we've talked about this in the past deferred submittals we've got lots of deferred submittals in here but distributed antenna system the DAS now what is a DAS if I was to try and describe what I understand it to be is the the DAS is trying to make it so that the cellular communications that are outside the building can go inside the building you go inside of like a building on campus with all the concrete um, you're you're gonna lose your cell coverage I mean you go into like a warehouse and you can lose cell coverage just by walking inside because it's all tilt construction and all so the the DAS idea as far as I understand kind of works like that you have those cell towers uh, all over the city right and then the idea is that you're moving the DAS you use this DAS system to then replicate that environment inside of a building so there's uh, this is a this is a deferred submittal in this case uh, and would be in the in the court of the general contractor to purchase uh, somebody that knew how to do a design and do the installation in most cases in most uh, buildings that are not like state of the Utah or federal government uh, I usually see this along the lines of being in the court of the client to take care of and and they're the ones uh, buying the system and we the general contractor are just trying to coordinate uh, the timing of uh, and maybe some routing of how to do these different systems so let's look at I found a I found I know somebody local that does it so I know Hunt Electric do uh, they they do these systems so they have a, a little part of their website uh, that says they do this DAS and I imagine most large general most, most electrical companies do this so I I'm not trying to favor hunt or anything I'm just trying to do somebody local even though I do like hunt 
uh, the DAS, and I like all electricians, I love that trade, it's fantastic, so no means try to show any favoritism uh, <clears throat> or, or endorsement or anything like that, right? Uh, the in, So the DAS, when you read through the, their thing, they're saying like uh, ensures public safety, communication, radio coverage, boosts broadband coverage, so they're talking about internet now, uh, improves reliability in heavily trafficked areas. So the idea is you have more and more people into a space trying to connect their phones and stuff. And so uh, the local cell towers might not be able to get it where you, or the cell coverage uh, signal is very weak inside the building. That has a problem, right? So that's all the stuff they're trying to do. DALS really uh, alleviates pressure on wireless network uh, when a lot of large group of people are in close proximity. This is interesting. Um, and I had forgotten about this until I just got on their website and looked at it, but uh, public safety codes mandate that approved radio coverage for first responders um, when they get in the building, uh, that their radios can work across this system. So if they're in a building multi-storied and uh, it's all concrete, the radio is not going to get very far. The, the DAS system will help be able to broadcast that. Um, <clears throat> And then kind of our, what we already talked about is improving the cell coverage inside the building. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in this by any means. I know what it is. I know that we talked about it with clients uh, from, from a coordination standpoint. It's a lot like what have to do with rough. I thought that this website was excellent. <clears throat> so knowing more about um, the DAS system and how it works so i'm going to put this uh waveform website on on uh not on on our uh, canvas so you have an idea and be able to read through this at, at your leisure maybe you're not interested at all maybe you are um but if if you're dealing with clients and larger projects highly recommend uh knowing a little bit about this and definitely reading through to understand the different things that you need to be paying attention to. And so I would, I would say in, in talking to the folks that do this and, and then this, this, this website actually talks a good about uh, the two parts as well. So one idea is that the DAS system can act like a repeater or a booster of the signal or it can act like adding its own um, like its own cell or its own uh, its own individual like cell tower in in the building right so in not that you would have one location because this thing gets spread out everywhere but imagine the whole building acting like getting its own like individual little cell network in here right so um and then going out through the internet to uh, so like like a cell tower right now uh is going to get somewhere in the city it's going to be standing there up in the air but it's going to have like a certain amount of uh like um fiber optic cable going to it right so that that's the that's the cable itself to the to the cell tower that's carrying all the the information all the data right so this is a similar idea and that once you get in the building you're connecting to one of these um, one of these parts of the distribution system and then uh, going and all your data is cruising through uh, fiber optics that are coming to the building it's not actually having to then go back to the cell tower because it's right on on the, the data anyway or it could be the other way around it could just be like picking up the cell tower and trying to then um, act like a repeater and magnify it. So there's two di two different ways that you could think about the DAS system. And <clears throat> and obviously one, there's costs, there's uh, all kinds of different pros and cons. And I, I really like this website for kind of really trying to describe the pros and cons or then their, their use strength and weakness and defining kind of how different different ways to do this 
this system. But I think for, for the purpose of this class, just knowing that there is something that a DAS exists and then uh, knowing kind of like what the two things are, you're either trying to act like a repeater, you're trying to uh, and, and magnify the, the signal, or you're trying to repeat that, not repeat, but duplicate the environment that's out, outdoors, indoors, with multiple locations, like multiple cell towers, are outside you move to a different part of the building you're going to connect to a different one you move to a different part of the building you connect to a different one and it's all at the same speed as if you had uh, you were uh, going from cell tower to cell tower on the outside or maybe it's better i don't know uh so anyways that's the das system you'll see it in the in uh in the canvas so take a look at that and we'll uh for now let, let's leave the class at that point and uh Thanks for participating with me here, and we'll uh, see you in the next one.